finger on an airplane. That's Sherman Field. That's the Navy base. Pensacola Airport is just about there. You go. There you go. That's it. Okay. Does it say anything in the legend about military airports or civilian airports? So look on your legend. And look at the symbol that describes airports. That's on the top left hand side. Are military airports different than civilian airports? How? Yeah, it's like just, just a basic circle, right? Yeah. Now, how about uh, how about in the airports above that where it shows uh, the ones? Some of them are circle, and some of them are are uh, kind of rectangular. Funny, funny shape. Am I making any sense? Does that make sense to you? Right at the top. Right here. Show him. The two of you. Right up here. This and this.
is strictly up to him. And if you choose to land at an airport that's a military airport, and they don't want you to land there, say, I'm declaring an emergency, I'm going to land. You get ready. And deal with it on the ground. Okay. That's just one of the many things that's in on this legend. The legend, uh, I mean, you, you, like I said earlier, you, you, you can't manage this chart without the legend. You, I mean, there's just too much information on there. It's cluttered, it's all over the place. You just, it, it, you just got to, you got to be able to have that legend and have it available and, and get things done. Okay, now, Put your finger on Pensacola International Airport. Okay. That's not going to be right there, so that's too far. Can you get it? Okay. What's the name of that airport? Yeah, does it say? Oh, 
towers are shown in blue. So, there's a control tower there. If there's a control tower, now we get into airspace with the legality requirement. That means that it's a Class D airport. A Class D airport has a five mile radius around it where you have to contact the, the uh, controlling authority, which is the control tower. So this has a tendency to get complicated. Uh, so that, that's information that, that you need to know. All right. Let's assume that we're going to fly from Pensacola to Dothan Airport. Pensacola to the Dothan Airport. If you put your finger on Pensacola and you move it all the way up there to that Dothan Airport, you're going to cross. You're going to cross some. Some that color is magenta. That kind of reddish color, magenta. Does magenta anything mean anything to you? You ever heard of that? The magenta line that tells you that designates the beginning of controlled airspace or class E and and uh, class E airspace. The magenta line. So these lines here, all of these are magenta. This is magenta. This is magenta. This is magenta. All of these lines in between here and here means there are legal requirements to go through that airspace. You can't just go driving through there. It's like property lines. Yes, sir. Sir? The gray lines, what are the gray lines over in Gulfport, Mississippi? The gray lines over there designate a uh, specific type of airspace. That is, uh, that's the Terminal Radar Service Area. Terminal Radar Service Area. That means when you get into that area, you're going to have radar service, and you have to. You, there's, uh, you can, it's the military over there. That's uh, Biloxi. That's that's the uh, Air Force, Biloxi Air Force Base. Akisa Air Force Base. I'm sorry. The 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 uh, is located next to Biloxi, and the terminal radar service area is. You got to talk to somebody. To go into that airspace. Now they got C 130s in and out of there. Keesler is where they have the uh, uh, the weather the weather airplanes that fly the C 130s, the hurricane chasers, that that stuff. Uh, they got a big operation over there. Uh, and you, you, you need you need uh, radar contact to make sure you're not running into each other uh, over there. Each of those magenta lines mean something. I'm not going to try to get you to understand that now. Exactly what they mean. That means, it means on the inside of the magenta line, the control airspace goes down to 700 feet. On the outside of the magenta line, the controlled airspace goes down to 1,200 feet. So that's designed to separate IFR and BFR traffic. And if, if you're on one side of the line, your weather minimums are different. You can have BFR or IFR. VFR is visual flight rules. That's a set of regulations that you fly, and you must be able to see. You've got to see at least three miles. You've got to have three miles visibility, 1,000 foot ceiling, and uh, you've got to stay 500 feet below the cloud. So, and 2,000 feet above to maintain VFR. 
I don't expect you to remember all of this. I don't want to try to put it in your head. It'll just clutter up your head. And you don't need it anyway. You may need it if you do get into flying. Uh, nobody will need it if you do. But that's why those lines are there. That, that, that I just want you to understand that in your preparation for flying and most other things you're going to do in life, you've got to realize there's a lot of regulations, there's a lot of governing factors that are going to create, create problems that you have to solve if you want to do those things. So that's what that's all about. So, if you look to the east of Pensacola, east of Pensacola and we've got blue lines and red lines that are on top of each other down by the coastline and those are significantly different these are blue lines you see these blue you see that Restricted airspace. Restricted airspace is airspace that you can't go into without permission. So you have to get permission to go in that restricted airspace. And it's not a choice. It's, you have to do it. You have to get permission to fly into that airspace then there's some of those magenta lines that have an airspace they separate it's called a warning area or a military operations area MOA military operations area the military operations area is airspace that you cannot go through on an IFR flight plan without a clearance you've got to be able to get somebody to authorize you to go through that airspace. Why is that? Eglin Air Force Base is in that area. Eglin Air Force Base is a major military weapons test area. They're dropping bombs over there. Smart bombs. Service station, 
and there's 15 people standing there for a wedding. The weather is already IFR. And that means instrument, instrument flight regulations. You have to have an IFR flight plan to get out of there, or you can get what we call a special VFR flight plan that will get you out of the control zone and then you're on your own. The ceiling was down to 800 feet. Clouds were 800 feet above the ground. I looked at that line and I looked at the clouds and I said, if I'm going to get this airplane out of here, I better go now. Because I don't have time to stand in that line. Because if I wait in this line, it's going to take at least an hour. It's going to take another 10 or 15 minutes to get the airplane airborne and to get out of here. And I can't do it IFR because the airplane is not instrument legal. Okay, so I fire that sucker up, I call the tower, and I say, I'm looking for a special field park clamp out of the control zone. I'm going to Edmund Air Force Base. He says, you're cleared out of the control zone, uh, maintain separation, clear for takeoff. And off I went. I go across the bay, I get down to the Navarre Bridge, I start uh, start following on the, on the, uh, uh, Highway 98 side of the bridge. I'm following Highway 98 eastbound going to Herbert Field. The winds were out of the east at about 45 knots. I was, the cars on the, on the 98 were passing. They were going faster than I was. And I was headed down 98. I had a bodacious headwind. It was really getting wild. The whole trip over to Herbert Field took me about, I don't know, 40 minutes. And usually that's a 20 minute trip. But there was huge winds blowing. And I was so low that the, the, there were times when I, when I was looking up at the treetops. And I was following the road. And that's the only way I could navigate. So I'm following the road. I get into what, and I knew on my chart where the where I had to contact Eglin. I contacted Herbert Field Tower, and I said I'm in the inbound from the from the west uh, to, to for landing. They says, "Who are you?" I says, I'm, "I got a civil air patrol airplane here. It's an official Air Force airplane. It belongs to the Air Force. It's owned by the Air Force, and it's operated by the Air Force." And I am a Civil Air Patrol officer, and I'm doing what's supposed to be done under these conditions. They said, you can't land. I said, what? You can't land. What do you mean I can't land? Why can't I land? You can't land. Okay, I can't land. Now, I, I could declare an emergency and force them to allow me to land and deal with all the problems after that. Now, this is 1974, and uh, things were not advanced as they are now. And I says, okay. So I couldn't land. I says, all right. I'm going to turn around and go back to Pensacola. Okay. So I turned around. Now, 40 knot headwind I was bucking on the way over there turned into what? A 40 knot tailwind. And I'm getting it across the ground. I mean, that little airplane was booking. And, uh, and of course, the winds are blowing and it's banging and cranking and carrying on. It's starting to rain. And, uh, and I'm, I'm flying. And, not working. On the way over, occasionally I looked up at the treetops. I was high enough to stay above the trees most of the way. Occasionally I ran into a little problem. Okay. On the way back, I, and no occasionally, I was in the treetops. I said, this is not working. I, I, I got, I've been through two, two, two tours of Vietnam. I got shot in the leg. I got a bullet hole. I got shot out of the sky and 
three helicopters, and I'm not going to die in a little airplane in a hurricane. So I'm going to land this sucker. So I look out the window, and there's this big open field down there. A big dirt field. And it looked like a junkyard. They had junk trucks down there. Uh, big six fives, big military trucks. There was a tank down there. A couple of things. And, and all of this is right there. And I was, God, I'm a hundred feet across the ground. And I'm looking at, whoa, okay. So I said, well, this, this field's big enough. I can put this little sucker down in this field. Everything's going to work out. So I'm going down there. And I, uh, uh, I'm walking along. Well, <clears throat> I see this brick building. There's a brick building there. And I said, all right. And there was a car parked out in front. I said, well, I'm going to land there because there's people there. And they can help me. But I'm, you know, what's going on? I was going to land in the woods and camp out of it. So, I went across that building, I hooked the right, I was on the right down then, I hooked the uh, right base, short final, man, as soon as I turned into the wind, that ground speed slowed down to about nothing. I mean, I wasn't doing much speed at all. I was probably doing 30 miles an hour across the ground. So I'm sitting there and I get the little airplane lined up, come across the fence, there's a, there's a Big, big fence, how military bases have, and all of that, and then I, I set that airplane down in that, in that, uh, in that dirt parking lot where all the old junk trucks were, and I said, ah, okay, I got it on the ground. I kept the nose into the air, into the end of the wind to keep the thing from blowing away, and I tied the tail down to the fence. Okay, and then I. I Climbed over the fence and I went to that building and I knocked on the door. And I'm in uniform. I'm soaking wet. I mean, it's raining. I mean, I'm soaking wet. I'm wet and the water just dripping off of me. And I knocked on the door and it's got one of these little slide things like you see in the movie. And this little slide thing swings to the, to the right there. And, and his eyeballs are looking at me. And, a pair of eyeballs looking at me and I look back at the eyeballs and I said, I just landed my airplane out here and I, wham, that door flies open. Some guy in uniform grabs me by the shirt, pulls me inside that building. He says, you did what? I said, I just landed my airplane in your parking lot out here. He says, we don't have a parking lot. I said, okay, next to the big trucks. He said, okay. He says, you can't do that. You're not authorized to be here. You, this is a restricted area, and you cannot be here. You've got to go away. I said, man, you're kidding. What do you want me to do? Put this thing on my back and carry it out of here? No, I'm not here. Yes, you do. You've got to go away. No, I don't. I'm not going away. I'm not doing it. Put me in jail. I'm not doing it. No. You cannot have that airplane here. I need to make a phone call and call Herbert Tower and see why I can't land there. So I phone call, I call Herbert Tower, I got some officer of the day, or officer of whatever it is, and he says, you didn't file a flight plan. Yeah, you're right, I didn't file a flight plan. Because I could not get a weather briefing because I could not get the flight plan in the system in less than an hour and a half, and I would not have been able to protect this airplane. You're right, I did not file a flight plan. He said, well, you didn't file a flight plan. That's our procedure. You can't land. <laughs> Do you believe that? You're <laughs> I said, okay. Okay, you got it. Well, I was a big skydiver at the time, and my buddy up at uh, Field 6 with the, uh, with the Ranger Battalion up there, this was back Vietnam had not had the Sante Raid yet. That's where the, uh, uh, 
the Delta Force went into the Hanoi Hilton uh, prisoner camp for POWs to pull to get them out of there. They were practicing for the I didn't know this. They were practicing for the Sante raid at Field Six, which is up north of Crowbert Field over there. Okay. And my buddy up there is a big skydiver. I was a big skydiver. I jumped out of airplanes like crazy and pool for a while. For years. Years. And I called him on the phone. I said, look, I got this little airplane down here from the Civil Air Patrol and they got they won't let me stay here. I've got to get it out of here. Can I bring it up to your and he had an airport, the airport up there. It's on the chart, field six. And uh, can I can I bring it up there and, and uh, tie it down in one of your hangers? He said, yeah, sure, bring it on up here if you want to. It's up to you. Uh, okay. So the people at the little uh, brick building were guards. They were civilian security guards. There were four of them. And they had all kind of equipment and they had guns and they had radios and trucks and all kind of stuff. And they said, uh, all right. I said, now look, if I take off from where I am right now, make a little bit of a left turn, there's a power line. And if I follow that power line eastbound, I'll hit the road to field six. And if I, when I get when I hit that road, I turn northbound, left turn northbound, and I can go up to the ranger camp, which is field six. And I can get there that way, and I can land on that airport. But if if I, if I can't make it, I'm going to have to put the airplane in the trees or put it on the road or something, and I need somebody to help. So, let me have one of these portable radios that you have in your truck, and I can put it on the floor of my little airplane. And you take one of your trucks and one of your drivers and put them at the intersection of the power line and the field six road and when I cross that road you know I made it that far you know I'm safe so they can come back here and I can go on up to field six and I'll have some way to communicate if I get in trouble they say okay good plan all right I get out there fire up that little airplane I untie the tail get it fired up uh, add power. I'm sitting there to it has a uh, control stick. It didn't have a wheel. And I add power to that little airplane. I rolled about 10 feet because the wind was huge. It was a huge wind. Bro. And and that little airplane lifted up off the ground. I hooked it a little bit to the left, about 30 degrees, and I'm trucking along there. Full power, going as fast as that little airplane would go, and I'm crossing the ground at probably 20 miles an hour. And I'm rocking and rolling. Okay. I follow the power line. I keep the power line on my right side because I got to turn left when I get down. All right. So I keep the power line on my right side, and I follow that power line until I get to the road. That took 10 minutes. And I, I get to the road at field six, and I turn left to follow, and I waved at the guy as I went by, he waved at me. So I'm following, I'm lined up on the, uh, on the field six road, and I got about another five minutes to drive to fly that well. I thought it was five minutes, but it wasn't, because at that point I had a crosswind. The wind's blowing off my right side. And I had that, I had a crab angle of about 45 degrees. I mean, it, little airplane going sideways like this. <clears throat> well, I'm headed down the road and I'm below the trees, the treetops. Big old pine trees out there and I'm below these trees. Alright. I see a car coming down the road. He thought I was going to land. So he pulled off the road and got off to the side of the road. 
to get out of my way. Well, I went by and I wagged at him and kept on going. And uh, I got down to, and now I had to make another kind of little jog to the right to get to the ranger camp. <coughs> Turn there, follow the road, and the ranger camp has got, they've got, the rangers have got a patch. They've got a kind of a, a semi-circle patch that says ranger. You, I don't know if you've ever seen that. I can probably have. And they had this ranger patch, and they got it attached to two telephone poles. One pole on each side of the road, and this ranger patch sticks up. And you go under to get that. Well, I go under there, and or, or I'm, I'm getting to that thing, and I see the two poles sticking up. And I know what it is. I've been there many times. You know, I see those poles sticking up, but I couldn't see the patch because it was in the clouds. And I said, hmm, I got a problem. Okay. I'm going as hard as I can go, and, uh, and I'm turning a little bit. I've got a pretty good crab angle to the right to get this thing going. I get to what I think is about 200 yards away from the ranger patch, and I come back on the stick, full power, one potato, two potato. Push forward on the stick, one potato, two potato, three potato, four potato, five potato, and push forward all the way and pop out of the clouds again. So, and now on this uh, pack. Thank you, God. And I get in and I, I come across, and now I'm in the ranger camp at field six. I know half of the people there. I've been skydiving with them for years. I'm a military guy, they're a military guy. We all do our military stuff. And we, we do that, and they hear I was coming. So they're out on the street, and I'm, I'm trying to maintain enough altitude where I don't hit the antennas that they've got in that area. So I get, get, get there while I come by, and they're all out in the street and they're waving and yelling and hollering and carrying on. And, uh, I've got a moon a couple of times, but whatever. And, and I, I go down to the, uh, uh, in the airport down on the right. I go down to the airport, hook it around, land on the taxiway that's facing to the east. And I didn't roll out five, I don't know, 15 feet. Couple guys there got the wingtips to keep the little airplane blowing away. I always carry two sea ration meals, a poncho liner, and a sleeping bag in the back of the airplane every time I went in it. So in that business, you never knew what was going to happen. So I had this stuff and a tie down, a rope. So they tie that. They tie the airplane down. I tie each wing down to a 105 howitzer and I tie the tail down to another one with the angle of attack where when the wind blew through the hangar, it was an open hangar on each end, when the wind blew through the hangar, it would force the airplane down and not force it up and all that, okay? I got that done and then went back, called somebody, it took him three hours to get there and he came pick me up and I told the guy, I said, uh, well, I described the place where I landed first. At that time in 1973, Eglin Air Force Base was the test site for laser guided smart bombs. I landed on the test site of the laser guided smart bombs. The smart bombs were stored in that little building that I knocked on the door. They were in there and those were security guards for the, and this is top secret stuff, I mean 1973. This is big stuff. And those trucks that were in that parking lot were targets what they would do is they'd drag those trucks out there into that into that impact area and they would drop these bombs on those trucks to see 
see how they were doing. And to this day, nobody knows that little airplane was on that airport. Those guards were not about to tell anybody. They didn't want anybody to know that. That no, we're keeping that secret. I'm not telling. I'll tell this story occasionally, but not often. So that's that's about that Edmund Air Force Base area, and you can see here how that how that. Uh, well, you can't see it here. You can see it on the internet. And you can see how how the uh, uh, how that impact area is lined up, and they they drop those bombs. So that was a top secret, super secret, whammy situation. And that's my story, and I'm speaking to. So. Is it important that you understand these charts? If you're flying an airplane, yes, it is. It's very important you understand these charts. If you're not flying an airplane, it's basic life, man. So you gotta, you gotta deal with school stuff. You gotta deal. You gotta. You gotta get clothes. You gotta get. Food, you got to get transportation. You got all of the stuff that you got to deal with. You got, you got to plan on this stuff. How do you get it? Where do you get it? Who's going to help you get it? How do you pay for it? Do you have to pay for it? What are you going to do? Are you going to get good quality stuff? What, what's the deal? All of this planning. But you got, and you got to be ready for things to go wrong. And I'll guarantee you. If it can go wrong, it will. Yes, sir. It's gonna go wrong. And you've got to be ready for it. Are you going to allow those types of obstacles to stop you from processing information or thinking? No. You gotta just keep thinking. You gotta do something you can't do. If you're flying an airplane, you're going to land. Now you can have a control landing, or you can have an out of control landing. It's up to you. And you, maybe you don't like it. Maybe you don't like like where you got to land, or what you got, or what the situation. You got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. And that's a big deal. So be ready for it when things go wrong. You've got to think. One of the things that the old timers used to say in the aviation business, in order to have a, one of the requirements for a, a uh, instrument weighted airplane is a clock that's separate from the system of the airplane. And in the old days, it was a lined up clock. You ever seen a wind-up clock? Well, we used to have clocks. Did you wound them up and a spring in there and the thing would run for a day or so? You had to wind it up again. The old Navy pilots during the war used to say, when everything goes wrong, the first thing you do is wind the clock. Why? You wind the clock because it takes your brain off of the terrifying situation that you could say, I'm about to die. Well, you no, know, I'm not about to die. After what I've been through, I ain't dying in no little airplane and hurricane in the middle of nowhere. No, I'm not doing it. So, you have to be able to process information in emergency situations. And your brain doesn't want to do that. Your brain wants to say, oh my God, I quit, I'm done, forget it. You can't do that. That doesn't work. Oh my God, mom's got my report card. I'm dead, I'm dead, what's gonna happen? Okay. So, 
You've got to be able to, to process information in an emergency situation. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get you guys outside and let you blow off some steam. We got some people out there. And just be careful. We're playing around these little kids. You, you're bigger than they are. And you, you, you certainly don't want, you don't want to frame someone or hurt someone. But then again, they may need some help or something like that. So just be very careful. And we'll get this, uh, go out there and do your thing. Be very considerate of the other people that are out there. All right, anybody got anything to say? Any questions? Anything at all? Okay, charts are awful boring. You're about to go sleep on me. I thought I'd tell you that story and try to keep you awake, but apparently I was successful. Okay, I'm here. We, we could not get the computers to do what we wanted them to do with the crosswind landings. And uh, what we think we may have fixed that problem. So we're going to try that. Just remember, steer with your feet when you're on the ground. Rudder pedals. And you use the bottom of the pedal, not the top. The top is brakes. That's where you get all that tire skidding noise. Uh, use the bottom of the pedal. You push it as far forward as it will go in the direction you want it to go. Like if you want, it to, you want the nose to turn left, push the left rudder. When you can't push the rudder any further, then use the brake. Steer with your feet. If you have a crosswind blowing from the right to the left, you want to put the right wing down. Right aileron. All right. As you move down the runway, it's going to want to turn right. Push the left foot. The rudder. The left rudder. And that will keep it straight down the runway. You push the left rudder to keep it straight if you want the nose to go to the left. You push the right rudder to keep it straight if you want the nose to go to the right. And that, that's the way it works. It may get up on one wheel, and if you've got the speed to lift off, go ahead and let it fly. Then level the wing. And track uh, you want to track the runway heading outbound, and that'll hit, you'll have to put in a crab. Crab. Does that do? Does, does what I'm saying make any sense to you? Do, how about? Does that make sense? Okay. What we want to do, and it takes some. You know, I can't tell you. Well, exert so many pounds of energy on the left foot, and this will happen, and that. No, I can't do that. You just got to get in there and try. And but, but keep doing it. Don't don't say, oh my God, I quit. Keep do something. Push the control. Do something. Don't just sit there. Does that make sense? Okay. Who are you going to get in the box? Oh, uh, Cayman. Okay. Then uh. Break it. All right. It came in then uh, Brendan again. Okay. So, okay, who's going to gonna work together? Who, who's going to work with you? Is it? Yeah. We got it somewhat, huh? I'm not sure. I can't Can you work with her? You can definitely tell them those first three. Okay. You work with her. What we want to do is get the feel for a crosswind takeoff. Okay? And then get in the air, come all the way around the pattern, back, and get the feel for a crosswind landing. Yeah. 
morning, you know. What what uh, what direction do we have the crosswind set up for? Uh, it's going east to west. So that from on. left to right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means you're going to have to have left aileron. You put the left aileron down, the left wind down. You start off with the left wind all the way down as far as you can get it. And then you start adding power. As the speed picks up, the airplane's going to want to turn to the left. Right rudder. Bottom of the rudder, not the top. And just keep the airplane straight with that rudder. As it moves, you take some of that aileron out. Make sense? Okay. You two going to work together? Or you two? Wind speed. Okay, you two. Wind direction. That's it, really. All right. You and her are going to work together. You're going to be with uh, uh, Mr. Navarro and you're mine. <laughs> okay. All right. Get on your machine. You gotta turn it off? Okay. You say do?
jobs. I was not a I was not a
see my cell phone.
S K to K M O D. What we really need to do right now, we put in our ATIS frequency, 11825, put it in right here. Dial it. Fly. Here, here. Switch it over. Stockton Metro information November 1755 Zulu lines are 29 or 6 at 7 knots. Visibility 10 miles. Skies clear. Temperature 27, dew point 16. Current altimeter is 29 or 9 or 9 or 29 or 9 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 Stockton Metro information November 1755 Zulu lines are 29 or 6 at 7 knots. We gotta get the altimeter. We have to know the perfect altimeter setting. So when we go to another location, the barometric pressure changes. And this setting will change as well. Altimeter pressure. So we need to put in our ground frequency 121.90. Right here. Ground. Yeah, you got it. One, two, one, nine, two. Well, you got nine, two. Nine, two. Go ahead and put tower. 120.30, put that in there. Same one, there you go. It's already there. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is going to be the ground frequency. We're fixing to talk to them. And once we get to talking to them, we'll switch this over to the tower. Okay, so right now we're switching the tower. Okay, so we're switching this over to the tower. Okay, so right now I need you to, when I start talking, hold that button. Hold that button when I'm done talking, let go, okay? Go ahead. Crowd says one big Bravo radio check. Let go. Do it again. Crowd says one big Bravo radio check. He doesn't like all this noise in here. Crowd says one big Bravo radio check. Brown says the one Victor Bravo radio check. One Victor Bravo, you are allowed to clear. Brown says the one Victor Bravo ready to copy for VFR. Brown says the one Victor Bravo ready to copy VFR clearance. Brown says the one Victor Bravo ready to copy VFR clearance. Cessna 1 Victor Bravo cleared VFR to Kilo Mike Oscar Delta with radar advisory service and flight 1 advise of altitude changes en route. Departure on 125.1. Clear VFR to Kilo Mike Oscar Delta maintained from squawking 6631. Departure on 125.171 Victor Bravo. Cessna 1 Victor Bravo squawk 6631. Departure frequency is 125.1. Squawk 6631, departure frequency is 125.1, says the one, one Victor Bravo. I'll say nothing else, man. Okay. Squawk. This goes here. What do you say the squawk was? 6631. Okay. Type that in. Those numbers, 6631. In altitude reporting. In enter. Uh -huh. In ident, right there. Now, that's the number that the tower gives us, so they will know where we're at right now. That's, that's all that is. Okay. Uh, departure frequency. Departure frequency, that's the frequency we put in. Once we take off, they will know where we're at. 
but it changes, so I'm not even going to bother with that right now. Right now, we're talking around. He gave us information. Now we're ready to tax it. So what we're going to do, uh, we want to tax it to one one right. Brown says the one Victor Bravo is ready to taxi runway one one right. Cessna one Victor Bravo taxi to runway one one right. By a taxiways November. Bravo. Old short runway one one right. Taxi runway one one right via taxiways November Bravo. Old short runway one one right. Cessna one Victor Bravo. All right, we're ready to go. All right, man. One way runway one one right's over there, but we're gonna hang a right. It's to the left, we're going to hang it right, and I'll show you where it's at. It's on the map, but I can show you. Uh, Raw down a little bit. Get your brake. Go that way. We're going to the right. Get your brake. That's your brake right there. Your brake brake, yeah. All right, you go. Go to your right. Go on this way. We're going to turn around. Watch your throttle. Look ahead of you. Go hit that van. Go down a little bit. Go a little too fast. Push your brakes forward if you're going too fast. There you go. Go this way. Throttle, manage, throttle management on the ground. Don't go too far down, you'll cut the engine. Follow the yellow brick road, yellow line. Going too fast, slow down. There you go, about that speed. Throttle. You feel yourself going faster? Just pull back and throttle a little bit. Uh, we're going. I think it's this way. Yeah. To the left. To the left. Down there. That way. Think it's that way. Yeah. Slow down, man. Slow down. Yeah. Going going straight. Going going straight. Yellow light. Yeah. There you go. This one or that one, we'll find out. Fly, you got fly, speed, fly. Slow down, slow down, slow down. We should come on pretty soon. Cessna 1 Victor Bravo contact tower on 120.3. Have a nice flight. Contact tower on 120.3, Cessna 1 Victor Bravo. Switch it over, man. Now we're on tower. Come up to that line. That line right there, that's our runway. You want to stop right there at that line. Pull your power down if you have to a little bit. There you go. A little bit more. Okay, Pull your power down a little bit more. Right there. Put your brakes forward. If you want to stop, put your brake brake. Okay. Tower says in one brick, brick and brawl is holding short. Runway one, one right. Tower says the one big bro is holding short runway one one right. Tower says the one big bro is holding short runway one one right. Cessna 1 Victor Bravo winds are 2, 9, or 6 and 7 knots cleared for takeoff. Runway 1, 1 right. Cleared for takeoff, runway 1, 1 right. Cessna 1 Victor, Victor Bravo. Cessna 1 Victor Bravo, you were garbled. Please yeah, say again. Okay, man, so we clear for takeoff. What you want to do now? Pull your brakes all the way forward. Pull your throttle all the way up. Check your RPM gauge. Make sure it's at 2500. All the way up. Pull your throttle, your brakes. Oh, pull your throttle down. Stop. Right there. Take off your brakes. Take off. That way. Get on the run. Get on the run right. He's on out there. You got one notch of flaps. The right state, remember? One notch. That's that one, right state, remember? Okay. Center it up. Center it up. Center it up. Full throttle. Nothing but feet. Keep it center. Keep going straight. Just let go. 
I'm going to go out already. The Young's going to be a little bit sensitive. There you go. All right, you up, man. He's got on that stick. Okay, we did set our airspeed. You're going to have to multitask. Get me about 2,000 feet on there. You can do it. Okay. You can do it, man. Multitask. They're going to help, man. That plane ain't going nowhere. <laughs> that plane ain't going nowhere. Turn that down to 2,000. Yeah. 2,000. Turn it. Turn it, man. Don't be... There you go. Turn it back. 2,000. 2,000. 2,000. There you go. All right. Get a little bit of old vertical speed about 100. Okay. Now we're going to put it in heading mode. We got to get on a flight path over here. This is our heading mode. We're almost there. Hit autopilot. Now hit heading. Right with going. Just touch it. There you go. Let go of the stick. Okay. We're turning. We're getting there. It's all right, man. <laughs> you know what that's playing <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is our plane right here. We're going to get on that line. So what you got to do, you're getting there. Once we get here, we have to turn that heading book so you'll straighten out to that line. Except what you've done this before. Now we're going to wait for her to tell us to switch to either departure or approach or frequency. Guess what's down? Let him up. Okay. All the way, man. We're steadily climbing. What's our altitude? What's our altitude, little man? You can use that one too, remember? 900, okay. We're getting there. We're going up to 2,000. Okay, look what we did. We got to get on that line. Yeah, we're heading up. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Just watch what it's doing, man. That's all you're doing. It's going to turn the lock and look where that bug is. That bug's going to go to the top. It always stops at the top. It's just it's good. It's good. So we got to get back over here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and. Excuse me, two guests can vocalize on 
That's the knowledge right there. That's the localizer. You remember when we did the ILS landings when we got the crosshairs lined up? That's what we're going to do. We're going to our destination on the other side. Turn around. We drop down. You got to lose some altitude. Right now you're at 2,000. I ain't going to tell you what to do at this point. You got it. I will do this though. Tower says one Victor Bravo request a full stop landing. Cecil one Victor Bravo squawk one two zero zero. Put that in. One two zero zero. Enter. Cecil one Victor Bravo radar contact. She knows where we're at. All right, man, land this thing. That's the airport. You know, the runway's going to be pretty much this way. You got it. You ain't going to get all this stuff. I'm just giving you a basic idea of what's going on. And this is software. It's kind of messed up. Especially on this jacked up computer. But you're doing good, man. Center. Show how you are. You want to get over there, Cameron? I ain't gonna tell you what to do, but you know what to do. You got it. You got the yoke. You got the throttle. Land is jumping. Don't forget about one notch of flaps. It's a little sensitive, man. <laughs> We're gonna land on that runway with light if the light is. Remember you can use that trim too. You don't always, you don't always have to use the hand yoke, know, you can trim it down. Trim it up, trim it down. Watch your airspeed. Coming in 100 knots, you gotta get over there to the left, Cayman. The runway's to the left. To the left. To the left, man. Get it over there, man. Get it over there. Get her over there. All right, man. There you go. There you go. What's route to 900? Got to come down some more. We're almost there. It's going to take long to get there. Okay, from this point on, it's all yours. Yeah, that stick sensitive. Yeah, I got to take it off. I made it that way for the little man. He's having some problems. Looking good. Looking good. It's about right. It's coming down. Looking good, man. Don't freak out at the bottom. Let it come on down. Looking good. Hold it. Let it come on down. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hold it. Hold it. That's it, man. You didn't jerk it. There you go. A little bounce. Hey, man. Nothing to it. A, a pro. You're a pro, man. You're a veteran. Go out there and school them kids outside, man. <laughs> All right. Good job, Cameron. Good one. Hit the brakes and get on up. All right, man. Give it again. Black. Remember the black one all the way up? Steer with your feet. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. There you go. You get to about 60 knots. 
Then we're going to do it like Mr. Skip said. We're going to do some right traffic patterns, all right? Can you, can you see it, folks? <laughs> a little bit much, a little bit much. Okay, get her on up there. Easy. Get up to about a thousand feet. Now you're going to start turning to your right because we're going to do right traffic patterns. You see that 750 right there? That's the airport. So we got to come back around and land on that runway. So don't hesitate to look out your windows. Because the airport's going to be, you're going to be looking out that window for the airport. Huh? Oh yeah, a lot, a lot better. Yeah, this one in here is a lot better than those out there. You gotta see the one in my house. It makes this one look like a piece of crap. I got a lot of money sucking that one. Look at man. A lot better, a lot better. You're doing a lot better. Right about there. Right about there, yeah. You're right, you're right on the nose. All you gotta do now is keep going straight. Then come back around and land on that runway if you can find a runway. You're gonna have to pass the airport. Then come back and land on that runway. The runway should be going like that. I think that's it. That's the airport. That looks like the airport, don't it? Over here? Yeah, okay, I think I see the runway. I think that's it. There's some lights right there. That's a runway. You don't, you don't want to keep getting too high. You're going up to, uh, you're at 2,000 feet. See how high you are? See how high you are. You're at 2,000 and you're still climbing. You don't want to get too high because you've got to come back down and land. Oh, don't jerk it. Don't jerk it. Remember, uh, remember you can trail up and down like that.
they can definitely pass it. So we got to go to the right over there. We got to turn right so we can find the airport. straight towards it. We're going straight towards it. Just got to find the runway. Which way is the runway? Easy to miss. Wow, you see the runway? Me either. That's the thing about flying VFR, visually flying. I don't even see any lights. What's that to the right? Dip. Oh, I saw a runway to the right. Go to the right a little bit. Nope, it's going to be on the left. Okay, get some altitude, man. Get some altitude. We ain't landing, we can't find the runway, so guess what? We can't land. We gotta find the runway. Double off, double off. We gotta find a runway before we can land. So get some altitude. It's to the left, according to that. See the airplane? It's over here to the left, though. I just don't see the runway. Wow, this is peculiar. It couldn't have moved it. This is weird. Okay, go to the left. There's a there you go. We're at the airport. We just can't find the runway. Okay, I think I see a runway. I see a tower. There's a runway. I 
think, I think this is it right now. I think. This is part of it. Right along here. That looks like it. Yeah. That's part of it. I wonder why the lights aren't on. That's really weird. Yeah, okay. Go back down. Let's see. Go over here. Over here, and we're gonna turn and come back in. Doing good. And you maintain it. This happens in real life, believe it or not. You can't find a runway. That looks like a presented like a runway. Huh? <laughs> this is a small airport. Okay, so we want to go, go out a little bit to the right. We'll go that way and turn around and come back and hit that runway. Go good. My bus, I had to bounce in the wrong place. You know, a lot better than the last time he was back here. Okay. So right about now, we start making our left turn and come in on that runway we just saw. Okay? Yeah, there you go.
little bit of gas. Yeah, go ahead. Nose up. There you go. Hold that. Hold the nose up. Ah. Okay, well, you got it down. You got it down. It was a little bit. We need, we need to get him a John Deere tractor. A John Deere tractor, huh? Yeah, he's plowing a lot of field. Ah, good job. Considering I couldn't even find the runway. Push the pedals all the way forward. Stop it. There you go. All right. Good job. Good job. Get on up from there. We'll get you in here next week again. You did, hey, you did a lot better from the first time we was back here last week. Yeah, real good.